Have you ever gone out to a classroom to talk about your work uh, to young kids, about 10 to 12 years old? Some of you have? Yeah, actually I know some of you already did. <laughs> I'm cheating a bit. Well, but today's talk, the goal of today's talk is actually to um, motivate the others, the other scientists, the young scientists amongst you, the colleagues, to go out there, to reach out to the young kids, and that is what today's talk is about. I want to share with you um, how it went for me to kind of show how passionate I am about my work, about the science, about what we do. And, you know, um, when you look up in Google the word professor, this is what you see. It is of um, usually bald-headed, a bit um, yeah, elder man, glasses, white coats, sometimes also this mad scientist, like, who I'm going to conquer the world. And actually, today, what I want to show you um, how the real scientists are. How did it all start for me? Um, actually, two years ago, the VIB asked uh, to join in on an initiative to all scientists, and my colleagues know that, to go out there and talk to kids in school. And actually, um, when VIB stands for Flemish Institute Biotechnology, would have asked me um, 10 years ago, I would have said, hell no. I cannot explain my work to young kids um, at all. Um, I, I didn't dare to do that. But um, when they asked me two years ago, I decided to jump in on the initiative. And you know why? Because by that time, I had to have already children of my own. And actually, my eldest son was in exactly that age category. They were, they were actually looking for scientists to communicate with. And why did I jump in? This is because I already got acquainted in talking to my kids about what I do in the lab. But the message of today is also, don't wait until you have 10-year-olds. Just go out there, because um, the VIB presents to you all the material you need. There are already slides available. Um, there are already some um, uh, like funny cartoons. There are easy wordings for you. And everything is just out there. Just add some of your own flavors and, and go for it, I'd say. So why am I so passionate to do this? As I was very nicely introduced, um, I am a professor, I do research, I also teach biochemistry. But um, I want to do this because actually it's a challenge for me. And when I think about these kids, um, okay, they're all different types of kids, and we know that, but um, you can actually kind of scientists like to categorize. You can actually think of three main groups. And on the one hand, you have these um, kids who totally dislike maths, who are really not into science, and they are more into language or arts. Then you have the middle group, which is actually a large group of hesitant kids, not sure uh, about their talents, not sure about, yeah, do I like language or science? And then you have this small proportion of kids of whom you can tell, okay, these just might be our next generation scientists. Why? Because they usually love maths, chemistry, and so on. So now, I told you I had kids of my own, so you'll probably wonder where I situate them. Well, I have one of each out of spectrum, I think. So I have a 10-year-old daughter called Noor, she's here. Um, who likes uh, art, who does not like maths at all. And then I have a science-minded son, Hes, who's nearly 13. But my arrows are not pointed towards these outer parts. My arrows are pointed for this middle section. I really want to convince these kids who are less in contact with scientists to kind of um, show to them how it is when you come into their classroom, talk about your work as a scientist, and kind of get them to motivate to choose for a career in science, technology, engineering, or mathematics, why we are here. So 
this is how it went then. I took the lab gear and I visited the school of my first of my son uh, when he was 10 years old. And this is called the Leefschool in Oosterzeele. And um, actually, the experience was so nice that two years later, I went back to um, uh, my daughter's class when she was 10 years old. And the way it went for these kids to talk about uh, my work is um, you have to use easy language. And it, it's not, this is not easy at all because somehow I think fundamental scientists are almost trained to do the opposite. But, okay, let's just imagine you're now in my classroom and you're all 10 to 12 years old now. It's great, feels great, doesn't it? So then I ask you, have you ever had a nasty wound? A bit like this. And you fell down and, and suppose you didn't take care of that wound. So what happened with that wound? You know what, what happened. And they all knew what happened. So the wound, painful, warm, Swole, felt swollen, and actually this is called inflammation. So I got them to learn this difficult word. Then the next question was, who has ever heard about cortisone? Well, Fredo, you don't need to use glucocorticoids. You can use cortisone. Um, and actually, I'm sure you already have heard of cortisone. Um, Amazingly, some of these kids did as well. They also had already heard of cortisone, which surprised me a bit. But for the others, I explained, okay, cortisone is a type of medication that people take who have inflammation all the time. And actually, I tell them that these drugs are, although they work really well, they have, a prob they have lots of problems because they are not good for your bones in your body. Um, it makes the people gain weight. And sometimes it even stops working against the inflammation. So they, they could understand that. They could follow that. So the next thing, okay, the chit-chat went really well. But what the kids really liked was to then jump into action, of course, to do some experiments. And they were waiting for it. The first experiment, this I'll show you in a minute, was that they could grow their own bugs, but I'll come back to that. The second experiment was, after I explained them obviously what DNA was, was that we could isolate DNA from soft fruits. And here you see the classroom um, actually working on it. Look at all these focused faces. Uh, they really enjoyed that. And um, what helped is just a tip for my fellow colleagues who want to go out there. So here we have Annalene who showed, we start from a banana, then we mash it up with a fork, and then we actually start putting water in it. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole protocol. You can just come to my lab if you want to know, or go in a classroom yourself, look it up. But what I want to tell you here is that this worked really well using pictures, and also when using text, you kind of emphasize what they need in colors. So it's kind of fail-proof, and it worked out wonderfully. So, and the third experiment, what we wanted to do was to build a DNA helix from candy. So that was also perspective worthwhile. Actually, these, what I want to convey to you today is some five tips on what really worked well in this classroom. So, first of all, when you want to tell what you do to kids, we always use PowerPoints, but often we overload it. So what you want to do is keep it very simple. It's a challenge to keep the attention span of kids. They will just yawn in your face. They are not bothered to hide their boredom. So that's the first tip. So the second tip is the interaction. This is actually what I told you before with the wound, kind of not a monologue like what I'm doing now, but talk, talk. For instance, um, I use funny cartoons and I use amazing facts and figures. For example, uh, what I do is um, I ask them, do you know how many bacteria, bugs, are inside your mouth? There are a lot, billions. That's already a shocking fact. So the third thing is some lab gear. Oh, they just enjoy, and I brought some of it today. They just enjoy this stuff. 
like a pipette, obviously. And what also works wonderfully is that you can just use some stuff to take home. This is an Eppendorf. It's a small thing. They isolate the DNA, they put it in there, they can take it, they show off to their brothers and sisters. So that is really nice as well. So the fourth thing is teamwork. Forget about the ivory tower. I ask them to do things together. And then the fifth tip I want to convey you, add something disgusting. They, they love it. For instance, here, so if you smell something, it's not the food. I brought this bacterial plate. It's called uh, an agar plate. It contains nutrients on which bacteria can grow. And so what I ask the kids is, please go out in the classroom and find the dirtiest spots. Or remember when I told you about the bugs in the mouth, just spit in the plate or use a coin of money. And yeah, they did a pretty good job. They even managed to grow a fungus. Isn't that beautiful? Hairy fungus? Yeah, but it smells. It smells like hell. So, I just told you now which five tips and tricks worked out really well. I also want to tell you something that worked less well, and that is, however tempting, don't plan too many experiments. You know that the response will be great, but try to hold back. Because if you can't do all what you want, the kids are disappointed. For instance, when I went to my son's class, okay, I got carried away, and there was actually a difference in the work pace between the girls and the boys. The girls were carrying on with the DNA isolation protocol. The boys were kind of mashing up the banana really, really for a long time. And then they started to blow balloons from the gloves, and what happened in the end, they couldn't make the DNA helix from candy anymore. So two years later, when I was asked to go in my daughter's class, I discussed it with her and I said, I'm going to uh, drop the candy. Um, it's just, I don't have enough time. But she convinced me to do it anyway. And I was like, oh, okay, so how shall we solve it? So what I did is actually, this is what I show there on the slide is complicated, but I just managed to find a way to just prove the point in two minutes. Like, okay, ah, it doesn't look nice, but they get, they get the drift, actually. So, hey, now I realize why my kids wanted to join me tonight. <laughs> okay, so, okay, what I want to say with this is, yeah, be flexible, be creative. And when you're in the classroom, um, it can be total chaos. It will be total chaos. The pieces of banana are flying everywhere. And if you don't watch out, you'll end up like me as well here with the leg. So, um, yeah, but at least what also happened in my daughter's class, and I wasn't aware of that, was that she actually told her classmates, get a move on. Otherwise, we will miss the candy helix. So, amazingly, in that edition, the protocol just went like a train. And, yeah, there was plenty of time to make this helix and to eat it, obviously. So, does it pay off? Is it worthwhile? Well, I'd say yes. Otherwise, I would never dare to be here. Of course, it pays off. And in what ways it pays off? Well, firstly, because of the teachers in, in the schools. They were wonderful, and I'd like to thank uh, Yofisa Bell and uh, teacher Els for actually having me in the classroom, and yeah, that was great. And I also actually want to thank my lab members, because they um, prepare for me this mobile lab, and they make sure I don't forget anything. After all, I'm the distracted professor I showed you before. And the third thing, also very rewarding is when the day after or the week after uh, some parents come up to see me and say, hey, my son and daughter is suddenly very much into becoming a scientist. They want to work in a lab. And that puts a smile on my face because then I think, yes, another soul is one. <laughs> and so what I want to say also is to the scientists here. I hope today's, with today's talk I have been able to convince you that it is really 
rewarding to go out there, that it's, the appreciation is really high, the satisfaction is high. And you might not even only win over uh, a soul from this middle hesitant section that just is looking for some spark for their future. Maybe you might also win over somebody from the artistic side, because when I went, um, when I actually, it was about two months after this demo, when I went in my daughter's classroom, they had a project in school on job fairs, and everybody had to represent a job. And guess what my daughter chose? Right, to be a scientist. And I swear, I had nothing to do with it. I didn't. I was at a conference. Eh? You, sure, I was, I was abroad. So, not my idea at all, I swear. But on the other hand, if she does want to be a scientist, well, I'm not, I will not hold her back. It's just her decision. And, but, you know, as a last to show, I somehow have the feeling that she won't be able to deny her scientific genes because, look, that is what she made very recently. So this painting proves that there is a good fusion between science and art, and look at the explosives. So thank you very much.